Choose two contrasting speeches. Avoid these speeches. Choose a speech that you feel passionately about. Choose a classical speech. Choose a contemporary speech. Avoid these writers. Pick from their speech list. Choose a speech that you relate to. Choose a character that you would realistically play. There's so much talk and so much emphasis on the idea of choosing the right speech for audition season that what ends up happening is that you just kind of panic and leave it to the last minute and don't actually put any real proper thought into it that it is all just kind of fear-based you grab a speech regardless of whether it's actually suitable for you you prepare it and you do it all the time just stabbing in the dark hoping that this will work and to this I say stop hold the phone chill out calm down <laughs> because yes your choice of speech really, really matters. So why don't you just woo, take a chill pill and actually think about it for a second? Does it matter as much as your talent? Well, no, but it still really, really matters. Okay, so picture yourself climbing a mountain, if you are so inclined to climb mountains. And it is the middle of winter and the visibility is really limited. The weather conditions are harsh and the gradient of the mountain is unforgivable. It's tough going, it's not ideal, it's really, really not. Now, are you gonna tell me that the equipment that you bring, that the clothing that you wear and that the snacks that you choose to fuel your body with, that they don't matter in getting you to the summit? Well of course they do. Of course they do. You know that having suitable footwear and an ice axe and all of the carbs in the world and the ropes and the helmet and all of that, that is going to be a huge component of you getting to the top of that mountain. Yes, of course, you need your own endurance and your tenacity and your fitness and your willpower to actually, ah, strive and get to the top. But you're not going to just go alone with your willpower and your tenacity and your fitness and go out onto the mountain totally butt naked on an empty stomach. You will die, you will die on the mountain. And although audition season will not kill you, you do need to think about the equipment or the speeches that you are bringing along on this mountaineering quest of yours. So now that we're actually seeing the importance of the material that you're choosing, you can actually see now that choosing either the right or the wrong material can make or break your audition. Because a bad speech is going to be a limiting speech and a good speech is going to be one that is gonna give you loads of opportunity to actually branch out and give yourself to it creatively and you want as much opportunity to have creative freedom within a speech as you possibly can. So why is it that I see actors again and again and again choosing speeches that do them a massive disservice? Well there are actually a few reasons for this but my top ones are timing, love of the speech, being given the speech and going with the crowd. And by the way if you are currently in the boat of going oh shit I need new material, I don't know where to find it, I don't know what to do, then you're good. It's fine because you can sign up to my mini course winning speeches and where to find them. All of the details are in the description below, but basically this is a mini course that you can work through at your own page and I will teach you what the components of a good speech actually are, where to go searching for them and how to decide what is gonna work for you. And this is a process that you can do really quickly, really cheaply and really easily. The whole thing is just about demystifying how to find all of these things so it doesn't feel like you're stabbing in the dark all of the time. You can make empowered choices with your material. So then you get to go into the audition and actually concentrate on what is important, which is the performance. So if this feels like something that you desperately need right now, then all the details are below. It would be brilliant if you signed up, but you can fire me off some questions if you've got any about it. Okay, so let's get back to the reasons why people choose bad speeches. Mm. So the first one is timing. Basically, you underestimate how much research and actual dedication needs to go into this to find speeches that are going to be suitable for you. Which means that you leave it to the last minute. Which means that you're scrambling to find a speech. Which means that you just default to something that you just is really easy to grab regardless of whether it's suitable for you or not. You prepare it, you go in and it's crap. You actually need to be able to give yourself time to sit down and properly analyze what is it that I want to showcase to the audition panel? What speech is actually going to contrast with another? Where can I find these speeches? What do I actually want to do in a speech? What do I feel passionately about? What is it that I want to use my creative voice to actually demonstrate to the audition panel? And all of that takes a little bit of time. Along with the fact that if you were scrambling at the last minute to find speeches, the likelihood is you're not gonna read the play properly. You're not actually gonna prepare 
that speech well. And that is really going to scupper you when you go into an audition, because the audition panel will likely ask you questions, or at least they will see from afar that you've only done some surface level preparation, and that is going to put them off. So basically, you're going to end up in the audition crashing and burning. And that's not through lack of talent, it's through lack of preparation. And you need both components to actually have a successful audition. So if you want to be finding high caliber speeches and preparing them, then that is going to take time. The next thing that I see again and again is too much love for the play. Now this may seem like a contradiction, it may seem like a complete contradiction in terms because of course you want to be able to love the material that you are doing. And I'm all for that, I'm all for people feeling really really passionately about a speech or passionately about a play or a character or the message within it, all of that kind of stuff. Top marks, absolutely. But the thing that we need to bear in mind is having love for something doesn't necessarily mean that it is good for you. People have a love for heroin, for example. Because I get coaching clients coming in again and again and working with people in drama schools again and again that are bringing in material and they're going, this is amazing, I love this, I love this. And I take one look at it and I go, that and you, both of these together, it's not gonna work. It's not doing you any favors. Either the writing is really, really bad, the character isn't suitable, the speech doesn't go anywhere or it doesn't say anything. It's just not right for the context of a drama school audition. Let me give you an example. Have you ever looked back on photos of yourself a few years ago and you realize, oh my God, did I do that with my eyebrows? Why did I think that that was good? Oh my God, did I genuinely wear that really baggy oversized band t-shirt as many times as I could in a week because I thought that it was the coolest thing ever? And then you look at those photos and you realize, I look horrendous. That is doing me no favors whatsoever. You didn't realize it at the time because you had some blindness to it. But looking back on it now, you would rather shoot yourself than make that choice again. And yeah, okay, hindsight is 2020 and we learn and we grow and all of that kind of stuff. But I'm sorry, when audition season comes around but once a year, you can't afford to be making those mistakes. So as much as you love the band t-shirt, it's doing nothing for your figure, it's doing nothing for the actual overall aesthetic and look of you, so you can love it from afar. You can love it for what it is, but you don't have to use it. Because using a speech that you love and using a speech that is suitable and does you favours are two different things. You want to be able to have them both together, of course, that would be the ideal speech. But sometimes, doing the old-fashioned kill your darling thing, sometimes you have to just let the thing go in favour of something that's actually going to help you. And whenever I get a coaching client that is giving me that resistance or that pushback of, no, I really, really want to use it, I think it's going to be amazing, the question that I always put to them is, would you rather use this speech or would you rather go to drama school? Because let's get real here, you can have one or the other, but you can't have both. So you got to choose. The third thing that I always see is people just being given a speech. So they've not actually chosen speech whatsoever. It is being given to them by a teacher or a coach or somebody who's recommended something. And they just kind of take that speech and go, oh, all right then, that's fine, I'll use that. And they've not put any thought whatsoever into it. They've also not had any initiative in the choosing process. And yeah, the speech might be so suitable for you and really, really up your street and that's fine, but you're gonna come into some difficulties when you actually get it in front of an audition panel because they will see a mile away that you're not connected to it, that you're not passionate about it, that it's not come from your own lived experience, your own way of thinking, because you haven't actually chosen it. And especially when it gets to recall stages when they give you redirection, they're gonna be asking you about this play. Why did you choose this speech? Why, wh what is it that fires you up about it? And there's nothing that's gonna put an audition panel off more than you responding with, oh, I don't know, my teacher gave it to me, so I just kind of did it. So it's like, it's like wanting to be a banker in a, like a really, really competitive environment and just rocking up at an interview and then going, why do you want to work here? And you go, oh, I don't know. I, my mum just kind of dropped me off outside of Goldman Sachs, so I thought I'd come in. Nonsense. And the fourth thing is following the crowd. A surefire way to shoot yourself in the foot is by just going with the flow and not actually sticking out for any individuality whatsoever. Because if Katie over here is doing a speech from this play, then you might as well do a speech from that play too. Or if everyone and their mum is raving about the fact that they've seen or they've read Fleabag, then that does not necessarily mean that you have to therefore do a speech from Fleabag. And by the way, no one should be doing a speech from Fleabag. Stay away. It's amazing writing, absolutely, but it's so freaking iconic that nobody else is going to be able to actually nail that to the best of their ability 
other than the person that originated it. But I digress. Going with the general consensus or riding the wave of what everybody else is doing is going to guarantee you one thing, that you are just gonna get lost in the sea of people. You will not be standing out for any good reason. Now, I don't mean that you have to go so, so far against the grain that you were doing something so obscure and so weird. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to be mindful of the choices that you are making and that you are not making them in line with what everybody else is doing. So before you jump on the bandwagon, ask yourself, am I doing this genuinely because I love this speech, I want this speech, I actually think the speech is doing me a favour here? Or am I doing it because... Well, it seems to be working for everybody else. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, just make sure that you give it a big thumbs up because by doing that, it actually gets it shown to more and more people and that way everybody gets to learn and grow together. And it's a beautiful thing. And remember that you can sign up for my mini course, Winning Speeches and Where to Find Them. The details are below, it'd be great to see you there. But in the meantime, I shall see you in the next video.